Hi, this is Chase Drum, AutoLine West Coast correspondent. Today I'm joined by Andrew Cornelia. He's the Chief of Staff at Volta Charging. Thanks for joining us today, Andrew. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I really, uh, it's been exciting to talk to quite a few people in the charging space and someone with your background, especially you've worked previously at Tesla and now you're the Chief of Staff at Volta. Uh, it's really interesting specifically around how you guys approach data and how it's really not taking the typical uh, trajectory around like trying to get the fastest charger, but the best location. Can mm -hmm. you share a little bit more with us how Volt is approaching this? Sure. Yeah, we definitely like to think of ourselves as a, a different take on EV charging. Um, you know, fundamentally, we believe that we're building the market leading public EV charging infrastructure network and really building the fueling infrastructure of the future. But where we are different than our competition is we are building a business model that looks to monetize and solve for the behavioral transition of fueling infrastructure, not necessarily just selling electrons. And that is really the kind of underpinning difference of Volta versus everybody else. Great. And I, I think, like I said, it goes really to leveraging that data. So can, can you share a bit more about how you guys approach uh, charging locations and really the infrastructure to make them more accessible for EV chargers. Sure. Yeah. For us, uh, I mean, data is foundational and I know that's a buzzword here in the Bay area and with other technology companies, but uh, it's definitely true to our heart. We believe that with our data set by understanding this transition, how cars will shift over time to an electric mobility landscape, we understand how the EV fueling infrastructure will evolve. And we plan our sites based on that demand as it grows. So we're not uh, going out and putting in 100 stations when the cars aren't here. We're building to the demand today and evolving over time with that demand. Yeah, I, I think a great example of that is really how you approach instead of having maybe like a few uh, high fast uh, DC supercharging or high charging stations along I-5 or an interstate, you're really looking at finding areas where people are going anyway and are gonna be for an extended period. Can you kind of yep. elaborate on that uh, big differentiator for Volta? Definitely, yeah. I mean, one of our fundamental beliefs is that in the future, where you go is where you will fuel. It's not gonna be this model that exists today, which is really the gas station model of going out of your way to fill up your car. So when we think about that and we think about this future of where you go is where you fuel, the need to always be fueling and recharging your vehicle at the fastest rate, the most powerful rate, it's not always applicable. So a lot of our competition, a lot of EV charging companies today, they are talking about higher power output, they're talking about DC fast, but really when you're charging your car, you know, while you go see a movie or while you grocery shop, the charging speed, the charging offering, that service amenity really should match the, uh, the activity or the location where the customer or the EV driver is going. So as we think about planning our network, we really think about a diversified product offering that matches our charging speed and charging offering with the site and with the experience of the EV driver. Yeah, that, that really makes sense when you look at a lot of the other charging companies, because Volta by no means is the first. We've even had a few others here on uh, AutoLine. It's just they kind of each approach it differently. But really, the big thing is trying to come up with that long term business model and really trying to do it in a scalable way. Can you, can you share how you have approached really finding the way to make this financially feasible, given that that can be really hard to do with uh, getting the infrastructure and the ongoing cost of electricity in some areas? Yeah, and this is really what sets us apart, and this is where other companies have found difficulty. I think, you know, if you think about the kind of business model of most EV charging companies, which is selling electrons, electrons do not have that much ability to drive kind of bottom line uh, or even, you know, kind of margin basis for an organization. It's a commodity unit. Um, it's also very hard to scale when you don't have the cars on the road. We're kind of in this trough period of EV adoption. Um, the cars are definitely coming. You see that with Tesla, you see that with Rivian, but it's a few more years before you have critical mass where those business models start to actually work. So when we designed our business model, and this is really kind of Scott Mercer, our CEO and founder, his original idea in 2010 when he founded the company. He was designing a business that would scale and adapt with every single evolutionary period of EV adoption. 
So as I kind of mentioned before, we believe in monetizing behavior, not necessarily electrons. And we think that's a lot more valuable. So currently kind of in our state today, you know, one of the ways that we're doing that is with this digital media uh, product of ours in the real world. And we use this as a tool and a platform before the cars come to monetize that behavior in a real way. As this business model evolves, we'll turn on more revenue streams and differentiated revenue streams that add to our stack um, and add to the value of the organization in the long run. And when people are looking to charge for Volta, what, what is usually the best way to uh, find the chargers or kind of start? Because, I mean, it's, it's pretty attractive when you think about it, if you're an EV owner, because most of these stations are free, right? They are, yeah. So uh, we don't believe, again, in the sort of value proposition as it relates to selling electrons, at least not today. Um, so, you know, the best way to find us is, uh, you know, by downloading our app, Volta Charging, on the App Store. You can go to our website at voltacharging.com. Um, you should definitely buy an electric car because it's, it's the wave of the future and, you know, it's a superior product compared to any gas car on the road. Um, but most of our sites can be found in those locations that you already go to. So I mentioned, uh, you know, we are building the fueling infrastructure for where you are going to today, that sort of amenity and service that you expect. So we have close partnerships with Whole Foods. We have close partnerships with Walgreens. Uh, we have close partnerships across a lot of these sort of essential service, essential networks that we're seeing today be really important in kind of our environment. And right now, uh, you, like, like you said, a great way to find out where the charges are are by downloading the app. And right now, Volta is just in North America, correct? That's correct. Yeah, we're just in the U.S. We're really looking at building out the intra-urban charging network. You know, we're different than uh, you see, you know, kind of competition of Electrify America or the supercharger network with Tesla. We believe in really building the the city and the urban charging product for EV drivers when they're around home. Because most of your driving happens, you know, within five to 20 miles of your home. You know, it's that occasional trip to grandma's home or to, you know, your ski house, et cetera. Um, but that's really our sweet spot. So we've built out LA, we've built out San Diego, San Francisco, a lot of presence out here on the West Coast, um, as well as Central. So Chicago, uh, down to Houston and Dallas. And we're starting to build out the East Coast now with New York and Boston and Atlanta. With your approach to kind of looking at data to really break down where these locations and maybe uh, city centers make sense, can you share like some of the really maybe counterintuitive things that you've come across that have really helped not only the company grow, but really make you stand out to your owners or the uh, EV owners charging on your infrastructure? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the most counterintuitive things is really the design of the business model. Um, you know, I think the idea that uh, you don't need to sell electrons to start an EV charging business uh, is, is kind of antithetical to a lot of uh, approaches that are out there in the marketplace. I mean, if you think about the retail fueling infrastructure or retail fueling business today, it's a 500 billion per annum business. And what that covers is both the fuel as well as the uh, amenities and services around fueling. So think about it as Twinkies and Coke. Um, and as we build our business model and as the electric transportation uh, transition happens, all of those dollars will need to shift somewhere. And what we're building and what is really kind of you know, counterintuitive is that as gas shifts to electric, that's really a deflationary cost, meaning that what was 300 billion per year for the gas section and 200 for the convenience store model, 300 goes to 180 because electric cars are more efficient, electricity is cheaper than gas, et cetera. So that opportunity is actually shrinking in the marketplace. That $200 or $200 billion opportunity, which is about $7 per visit from a customer. And again, Twinkies and Cokes, um, you know, your convenience store model is actually gonna increase because the average spend per customer at a grocery store, say, is around $30. So that opportunity is gonna become massive. And really that's what we're going after. We think about the service amenities that will surround this infrastructure in the future, and that's what we're building too. 
Well, I, I think what's really interesting and scalable about it is one of the big challenges people have been talking about is like, hey, if you're not a, if you don't own your home where you can put in an EV charger or you might live in a condo complex where it's just not financially feasible yet to put in these charging, uh, the charging infrastructure. Volta does start making it really easy to live in a city center, be able to kind of live your life, go into the grocery store and other places uh, and be able to still charge. And then on top of it, do it for free. When you look at this and kind of these, I, I think, as you've mentioned, it, a big part of how to get in touch and get to interact with Volta right now is through the app. But one of the areas that a few of the OEMs have started looking at is actually including these uh, charging locations and charging uh, networks in the actual infotainment mm -hmm. of new cars. Is that something Volta is looking at doing? Because I think that would be a big area to stand out when the option is you could either go to XYZ Charger and it's going to cost you money or you can go buy groceries and go to Volta for free. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, those sort of partnerships are going to be crucial as the industry evolves. I think you've seen Tesla, which is vertically integrated, that sort of solution, you know, charging with the vehicle all in one company. Um, but future OEMs are not going to all build their own infrastructure, right? So those partnerships do need to exist. It is going to be absolutely crucial to have the infrastructure support the vehicle sale and as well as kind of vice versa, right? I mean, you can't have the infrastructure companies without the car. So there's going to need to be a very close partnership between the two. And we're in those conversations today. Um, the other really important relationship that, um, you know, is somewhat uh, related is actually, you know, energy. Because as the electric transportation uh, revolution happens, one of the largest players in this game will be utilities. And the whole energy uh, landscape as we know it, all of the power assets, all of the trans uh, transportation and distribution systems, all of the kind of utility interconnections, there's going to be a massive demand for electricity on the grid in the coming years. So when we talk about partnerships, I mean, OEM partnerships are very important, uh, but actually energy and utility partnerships are equally as important. Um, and that's where uh, actually Volta is taking really big strides, which is to understand the future utility grid and help those utilities plan for that. So really kind of being that consultative, uh, you know, agent in this whole discussion. And, you know, to kind of go back to some of your questions on data, you know, that is one application of how we think about, you know, the use of data and really the value of data. Now, uh, that, that all is amazing. And I, I think just talking about the different people involved, whether that's the EV owner or even a utility, uh, someone who works at a utility that may want to suggest looking at bringing voltage chargers into their uh, region. How would what's the best way to engage with Volta and kind of get those conversations going? Yep, definitely. Uh, you know, our website is probably the best resource to collect information, submit suggestions. You know, if you have an interest from uh, a site partner perspective, meaning you know you are a retail owner or you have your own grocery store or you just think that there is a location that you know needs Volta, you know, definitely reach out to us on our website. Um, any of our other social media feeds, whether it be Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, you can definitely reach out to us there. Um, you know, we will be building out our network uh, over the next year and continued years uh, here in the U.S. as well as beyond. Um, so, you know, if uh, you don't want to reach out, you know, just keep an eye out for us and uh, we'll be in your neighborhood shortly. Well, great. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us today and uh, sharing more about Volta. We're definitely interested to see how this grows and thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, Chase.